untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis Giants deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, which also happens to be a Grixis Graveyard deck, as we have some payoff cards for filling the graveyard and some ways to enable them. And one of our enablers is King Narfi's Betrayal, a 3 mana rare saga that on the first chapter says each player mills 4 cards, and then we may exile a creature or planeswalker card from each graveyard. And then on the second and third chapters, until end of turn, we may cast cards exiled with King Narfi's Betrayal betrayal without having to worry about their color requirements. So King Narfi's betrayal can often be a nice two for one while filling the graveyard. And then we also have Timur Calls the Dead, another rare saga that helps us fill the graveyard, as on the first two chapters we mill three cards, and then we may exile a creature or enchantment card from our graveyard, and if we do we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token, and on the final chapter we gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of uh, zombies we control. So we can also exile other sagas with Timur Calls the Dead, and keep the creatures in the graveyard for King Narfi's betrayal. And then our final enabler is Merfolk Secret Keeper, which is a creature, so it also counts as a creature we can exile with Timur calls a dead, but we can also use the Venture Deeper Adventure to mill target player for four cards. So we're going to target ourselves to put four cards in our graveyard. And then we've got some payoff cards for filling the graveyard. One of them is Glimpse the Cosmos, a nice two mana card draw spell that we can replay out of the graveyard for just a single blue mana, and then look at the top three cards of our library and put one of them into our hand. And then we also have Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, which is also a giant, so it will enable some of our giant synergies, and is also a very powerful escape card, which we can play for just four mana if we can exile five other cards from our graveyard. And then last but not least, we have Quakebringer, which at the beginning of our upkeep deals two damage to each opponent, but this ability triggers only if Quakebringer is on the battlefield or in our graveyard, and we control a giant, and there's no lack of giants in this deck. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. So at 1 mana we've got Merfolk Secret Keeper, at 2 mana 4 copies of Glimpse the Cosmos as our card draw engine, as well as 2 copies of Heartless Act as another cheap removal spell to complement our 4 copies of Bone Crusher Giant, where we can use the Stomp Adventure to deal 2 damage to any target, and then play the 4-3 Giant afterwards. Then we also have 2 copies of Invasion of the Giants, a nice 2 mana saga that on the first chapter lets us scry 2, on the second chapter we get to draw a card and then reveal a giant card from our hand, and if we do we get to deal 2 damage to target opponent or planeswalker, and on the final chapter the next giant spell we cast this turn costs 2 generic mana less to cast, so we recoup the mana that we spent on Invasion of the Giants, so we can maybe play a cheaper Calamity Bearer, Quakebringer, or Bonecrusher Giant. Then we already mentioned Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, the powerful Elder Giant that we can first play for 2 mana, making the opponent discard card and potentially lose 3 life, and then later we can escape it out of the graveyard for 4 mana, and whenever it enters a battlefield or attacks it will trigger that ability once again, so all that incidental damage from cards like Invasion of the Giants, Croxa and Bone Crusher that can also go face, as well as Quakebringer out of the graveyard does add up, especially when doubled with Calamity Bearer, so that's how we can quickly whittle the opponent's life total down. At 3 mana we already covered Bone Crusher and our two Sagas, and then our final card here is Calamity Bearer, the 4 mana 3-4 Giant Berserker, saying if a giant source we control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage to that permanent or player instead. So if we have multiple copies of Calamity Bearer, those will also stack with each other, so two copies means we deal quadruple that amount of damage, and it also works with Quakebringer, since it counts as a giant source dealing the damage, so that will also mean that we deal four damage with Quakebringer with just one Calamity Bearer in play, so that also quickly adds up, and of course a 3-4 means that it attacks for essentially six damage, so that can also quickly end the game. And then finally four copies of Quakebringer, which we're happy to mill and have in the graveyard, but we can also potentially play it for four mana, thanks to Fortel, if we spend the two generic mana on a previous turn to exile it, and then we can play it at a discount, and then we get a 5-4 that says our opponents cannot gain life, and at the beginning of our upkeep it will deal two damage to the opponent. And then going over our mana base, we've got eight temples total, with four copies of Temple of Deceit and four copies of Temple of Epiphany, and the reason we're playing these specific temples is so that we can still produce blue mana, as well as have a land that can make black or red to potentially escape Croxa, so we're not necessarily forced to play a blue land if we want to be able to escape Croxa on turn 4, but we still get our blue mana this way. And then we've got two of each basic swamp and mountain, no basic islands, but we can potentially get more blue mana thanks to our pathways, although for the most part we want to avoid playing them as blue sources if we want to get an early Croxa in play. So we've got the blue-black pathway, the blue-red pathway, and the 
black red pathway. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand seems fine. Lead with Temple of Deceit. Do we want a Bone Crusher Giant? I don't think we do. I would rather find some more self mill cards to enable Croxa, and maybe find a fourth land to help us escape. And we already have some cheap removal with Heartless Act. All right, so we'll mill ourselves here, or we can, I guess, play Croxa. It's probably better, and then next turn go Secret Keeper Fortel. Alright, opponent with a Seize the Spoils, so they're ramping into something. Blue Rats, opponent foretells. Another Secret Keeper, alright, so... Mill myself. Find a glimpse the cosmos, and then we'll foretell our giant here. Next turn I can mill again, and then turn five we'll be able to escape Croxa. Alternatively, we can play Quakebringer. Picked up a Bone Crusher giant. Would we rather get Croxa in play or Quakebringer here? It's close. Should probably just go with Quakebringer, that way if we pick up an extra land next turn, there's a chance I can mill myself with Secret Keeper and play Croxa in the same turn. Second Midnight Clock, opponent keeps ramping and a replicating ring. So I'm a little scared for what they might ramp out here. Invasion of the Giants. So, might want a glimpse. Try and pick up another blue source that way. Second Secret Keeper. Yeah, let's try it. Alright, there's my pathway. And then, I think I'm okay just running out Bone Crusher as a 4-3. Although there is a chance my opponent will wipe the board here. Start by milling myself. Alright, another Quake Bringer in the graveyard. Yeah, let's play 4-3 here. And hope our opponents can't wipe our board. Behold, the Multiverse was the card they foretold earlier. Maybe digging for a Storm's Wrath. And there it is. Still get to escape Croxa at least. Calamity Bear also a good one. So just want to keep creatures in the graveyard for King Narfi's Betrayal and Timurt Calls the Dead as much as possible. I might as well run out a Secret Keeper here. And I mean next turn, if Croxa survives, could attack for 12 damage with Calamity Bear doubling it. Which would be enough to win the game with those Quakebringer triggers. Elrond's Epiphany means our opponent gets to take an extra turn, which does synergize nicely with Midnight Clock and Replicating Ring. And our opponent now has a few Chum Blockers. Opponent's gonna go digging with Frantic Inventory. And next turn they're gonna transform Midnight Clock and draw a fresh hand. Although not before they take a bunch of damage, and in fact our opponent attacking with that bird could cost them. Especially if we draw land here. Which we did, perfect. So Heartless Act can take care of... make sure the Auto Tapper doesn't get us here. One token. And Calamity Bear doubles Croxa's damage, although... Just Crocs attacking here would be 9 damage, so a bit of a greedy attack with a 1-1 token there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and... Don't have an amazing hand, but we do have lots of self-mill with early secret keepers. 
think I'm still leaning Mulligan just because the mana is going to be awkward if we want to try and escape Croxi if we're forced to play a blue source early. This is better. Probably get rid of Quakebringer even though we could foretell a turn 2. Although turn 4 we're going to want a Calamity Bearer. And then we'll keep the self mill effects to hopefully escape a Croxa early. Secret Keeper seems fine. We will also need a second red source eventually. Well, let's see what we're up against. Catria Trium. Huh, so far nothing too juicy. Quakebringer would have been better in the graveyard. And we'll get rid of the saga here. Keep creatures in the graveyard for King Narfi's betrayal. Opponent foretells. No double rats, sadly, but we did mill. Some good ones. And we'll get another Timurt Calls the Dead in play, as well as Secret Keeper. At this point I might be better off playing this as a blue source. That way we have double blue, which is useful for Glimpse the Cosmos. And we'll get rid of Bone Crusher. Calamity Bear probably more impactful if we get it back with King Narfi. And the other ones have more utility. That uh, point's got their own Quakebringer. Although Heartless Act, not a bad answer. Make a zombie before scrying. Get rid of the saga. Don't gain any life because of Quakebringer, so I guess we could have decided to Heartless Act in response here. But I think we're just going to keep the black red land and ditch everything else. And then take care of Quakebringer. Attack for six. And next turn we can escape Croxa. Battle of Frost and Fire gonna clean up all our zombies, unfortunately. But not very effective against our giants. And then we can still glimpse the cosmos after. Got two copies of Quakebringer in the graveyard. And those are all decent. I think we'll go with Betrayal. Could have also opted to play Calamity Bearer instead, since that would mean eight damage just from Quakebringer triggers. Alright, it's gonna be Demon Bolt plus Stomp to take care of Croxa. Although we can escape Croxa once again here. Opponent's hand also starting to get pretty empty. Let's see what they've got. Opponent's also playing green, maybe for Beanstalk Giant or some Changelings. One falls to five. So they might have another Stomp, in which case they can trade for Croxa, but that seems acceptable. Calamity Bearer gonna double our damage, although it doesn't double 
the Croxa trigger. But our opponent concedes since they know that they're gonna die to Quakebringer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Might wait on Invasion to give ourselves a better chance of playing Croxa, but Temple's an excellent pickup here. And yeah, I'll keep it Timur Calls the Dead. So turn two, I can play Croxa. Turn three, Timur Calls the Dead, and then we might be able to escape Croxa on four. Which is kind of the dream. Opponent Mono Green playing Kahira as companion, so maybe Cat Tribal here. Gets rid of another Kahira. Green White. And yeah, Scythe Cat. Opponent is indeed on Cat Tribal. Let's see how it matches up against the Giant Tribal. So this can be Black. And do I want to exile Calamity Bearer? So next turn we get to mill three more. Yeah, it's probably fine. Followed our retreats, all right. Scythe Cat stays back. And then we'll decline and escape Croxa. Do have to get rid of a glimpse, but that's okay. Put on discards Prowling Felidar. Token gets in. I did give up the opportunity to stomp Scythe Can before it picks up more counters, but that should be fine. Cultivate going to ramp, so that's gonna give them quite a few landfall triggers, so I guess Scythecat might overtake Croxa in size. Although they're gonna go wide with the token instead. Six five Scythecat stays back. Don't need mountain. Yeah, I mean I don't mind trading Croxa for the Scythecat here. Could play Calamity Bear first. So this way if they take it, they take 12 damage. That point's gonna trade. And then we wanna find more self mill cards to escape Croxa once again. King Narfi's Betrayal can be one of them. Another cultivates. And Kahira from hands to give all their cats plus one plus one. I'll take four. Alrighty, so might want to stomp Kahira, play King Narfi's Betrayal, and then wait on Quakebringer for an extra turn. And then I'll keep stomp at instant speed to maybe surprise the opponent, so start here. And then... We'll choose Secret Keeper in our own graveyard. And what makes most sense here? I guess we'll just take the Sovereign. Pass a turn. Now if they choose the plus one counter on retreat, we will have to respond with Stomp. Stomp doesn't count as a giant source, so it's not doubled by Calamity Bear. Alright, now we'll have to stomp Kahira. Ooh. 
So they could attack with all to try and take out our King Narfi's Betrayal. Better point just sends a 4-4, which I'm happy to trump. Alright, so we can choose the Adventure here on Secret Keeper. Make it easier to escape Croxa. And Timurt calls the dead. Get rid of that Kahira. And we'll stay back. And then Quakebringer plus Calamity Bearer can close out the game here. Opponent makes another token. I could play Sovereign as well, but I think just playing another Quakebringer is probably to play. And then we'll stay back. Let's see if I attack with Croxa. We'll get two Quakebringer triggers, which are both for damage. So I guess we guaranteed kill the opponent next turn on our upkeep. Don't think we're at risk of dying. So they need removal for Calamity Bearer, maybe. Instead, Cultivates for two more Landfall triggers. Is not gonna cut it. Opponent gets a plus one counter and Vigilance. I'll just chum the largest one. And then double Quakebringer trigger. With Calamity Bearer in play, we'll end the game. Alright, so Green-White Cats definitely put up a good fight, but Grix's Giants came out on top. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent opening hand. Turn to Invasion to set up a discounted Calamity Bearer. So we're gonna be looking for an extra red source here. Uh, don't know if I want to keep a Secret Keeper. I think this is going to be a different type of game where we try to rely on Calamity Bear more. Turn to Invasion. Alright, Timur calls it dead. I can probably afford to keep. Probably should have kept the other Timur calls it dead on top if we plan to play it, so we're guaranteed to make a zombie. Although we might find better graveyard synergies by putting it on the bottom. Aha, I see Sanctum of Stone Fangs, so either a Sanctum or some sort of life gain deck. So this turn I can Timur Calls the Dead, and then next turn we can play two mana Calamity Bear, plus maybe Glimpse or Heartless Acts. That seems acceptable. Although, never mind, I guess we need to play the red land here if we want to have double red for Calamity Bear next turn. So that means no Timur calls it dead, and we're just gonna glimpse here. And then Croxa is a nice pickup alongside Timur calls it dead. And Quakebringer would be a nice one to mill. I guess we can still draw it, since we'll have plenty of mana here. Alright, so we've got our next couple turns figured out. Plenty of ways to spend our mana. And some cool graveyard synergies coming up. So, could also decide to play Quakebringer instead of Calamity Bearer. And then I can still play a one mana Glimpse of Cosmos as well, which is slightly more mana efficient than Calamity Bearer, assuming we don't Heartless Act anything and we don't have triple red for Calamity Bearer plus Croxa. Although I could also foretell Quakebringer, which will give us a one mana discount eventually. So a few ways we can approach it. Next turn we'll have 5 mana, so I can Timur Calls It Dead 
plus Croxa and then escape the turn after. So it's gonna be a while before we play Quakebringer if we don't play it now. And I think overall I would prefer Calamity Bear in play. So yeah, let's play Calamity Bear. And then Glimpse might pick up a Temple, which we can still play here. Alright, opponent's got Heartless Sanct for Bear. That's fine. And another Quakebringer or Invasion. I guess Invasion can set up a cheaper Quakebringer later. So we'll take that. And then play a Black Source. Definitely had a lot of options that turn. And next turn we can Timurt calls a dead plus invasion. King Narfi's Betrayal can also eventually get back. Calamity Bear. So we probably have enough blue mana already that I would prefer an extra black. And then we want to mill before we scry. Exile the Saga, keep the creature. Although, I suppose if we croc on now, then we're guaranteed to escape in next turn, which was the original plan. Which is probably better than invasion here. Opponent in the meantime with double Sanctum, the blue and the black one. They don't appear to be a five color Sanctum deck, judging from the triple basic swamp. So there's already backup copies in the graveyard that they didn't need. Get rid of a secret keeper. Attack for two. And escape Croxa. And our opponent could easily have a sweeper like Extinction Event or Shadow's Verdict, which would deal with the tokens and Croxa at the same time, since Croxa has two covered mana costs and the tokens are even at zero mana. Mythos of Aluna, an interesting one. And there's Extinction Event. Alright, so. Crox is also exiled, so we won't be able to escape the same copy again. So I think now I'm leaning Quakebringer plus Tapland, and then next turn Calamity Bear can maybe double the damage. So we can deal a nice 10 damage to the opponent's face. And then we need to dig for more threats. Quakebringer in the graveyard is one way we can potentially drain the opponent to death. And Quakebringer also stops the life gain from Sanctum. Although it only stops it when the Quakebringer is in play and not in the graveyard. Alright, Mythos to copy our Quakebringer. But we can take that out with Heartless Acts. And hit them for 10. So they need another board wipe here. Let's see if they can find one with Sanctum of Calm Waters. Mythos copies Quakebringer once again. And Underworld Dreams also gonna slowly drain us. Alright, so opponents at 8. Can we find removal for Quakebringer? Well, I guess we can. Let's see. Don't quite have enough for King Narfi's Betrayal. Get back an extra Calamity Bearer, which would be lethal here. So instead, I can glimpse. 
And if I find Stomp, we can finish our opponent off. So that seems good. Find another Betrayal or Land. I guess I don't mind an extra land here. Can mill myself with a Secret Keeper. Or we can replay Glimpse first. Alright, another Calamity Bear should do it now. This will get quadruple the damage output. And one creature will go unblocked. So that should be 12 damage from Calamity Bearer to close out the game. Alright, close one here against the control deck, which failed to find another answer for our Quake Bringer and Calamity Bearer. Alright, we're on the play, and this is a fine opening hand. Temple gives us blue mana while still making black for Croxa, so we might be able to escape on turn 4. Calamity Bearer is okay, but I think we'd rather dig towards land number 4 to guarantee Croxa escape. So since I only have a single blue, I'll have to mill myself with a Secret Keeper here. And then next turn, play Croxa, mill again, and then turn for escape. Mill the Nother Croxa. So, we can potentially leave some of our other graveyard payoffs in the graveyard in the meantime. Don't think Finn changes anything to our play here. Now Death Touch creatures will line up quite well against our 6-6 six, six giant. But our opponent will lose a bunch of cards out of their hand in the meantime. And we can stomp on the smaller Death Touch creatures. Right, opponent on Jund and Hooded Blindfang. So not sure what the red is for as we take our first poison damage. Yeah, we'll stick to the plan, escape Croxa. And keep as many creatures in the graveyard as possible for King Narfi's betrayal. We can potentially double stomp one of these. Put on discarded a Varagoth, another powerful Death Touch creature from Kaldheim. Shovel Bane of Monsters plus Inscription to Fight, although it is a trade. Alright, opponent is empty handed, but we are up to 6 poison now. So I think we want to double stomp Finn, since the poison is probably more threatening than. The regular damage, although can also play Bone Crusher as a blocker plus Secret Keeper, so we've got a few options. I guess double stomp plus play Secret Keeper is probably okay. And then we can slowly take over with Glimpse the Cosmos. They drew a backup Finn. I think we'll still manage. King Narfi's Betrayal is a good one too. So I can Bone Crusher. Maybe start by Glimpsing actually. Play Bone Crusher. I wouldn't mind hitting an extra land drop. And Bone Crusher can trade for one of their creatures. And then to play it safe, play an extra blocker. Another Blight Fang. Alright, so the damage is now all siding up. Probably still more concerned about poison than I am regular damage. Although I could trade, block, still be at 6 poison. It's a close call. 
yeah, I think I'll do it like this. And then we can replay Bone Crusher. Play Glimpse out of the graveyard. Wait on Croxa for now. Try to find some more cheap interaction. Invasion Quakebringer. Guess we can foretell Quakebringer. And then play it alongside King Narfi's Betrayal next turn. So we are dead to a removal spell if it doesn't kill any of the opponent's creatures. But next turn Heartless Acts is gonna save the day. So we're up to 8 poison. But now we should be able to take over. Escape Croxa. And we'll keep up Heartless Acts. Although I probably should just kill it now. Just in case they have some protection spell like Snakeskin Veil. Alright, Calamity Bearer can close out the game pretty quickly here. Milled another Quakebringer, and our opponent explodes. They're about to take 15 damage from a single Crocs attack, and next turn Quakebringer times 2 with Calamity Bearer should close out the game. Sweet. So Grixis, Giants, a pretty fun tribal deck with some cool graveyard synergies as well. So if you're into the market for tribal synergies and graveyard synergies, this might be the deck for you. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.